How are you guys doing? You guys are getting fat. Good morning, modern step. Oh wait, that's not my line. Good morning, beautiful people. It's not really my line either, that's Meg's line. All right, so I've noticed a lot of people have asked, you know, hey, how are all the animals doing? How are, you know, this and that? I'm gonna take you guys along. We're gonna look at all of the, the plethora of chickens and pigs and things and just, you know, kind of show you how things are going. All right, somehow all of my buckets have disappeared. All right, so we took all of our new layers we got. I made a safe box for them. I'll go in there and show you after I throw some feet in. Um, basically, it's a spot where the youngest ones can get in there and get away from the big chickens, because chickens are brutal. Chickens are really mean. I gave them a feeder in there, and that's where the, the youngsters can get in there and eat and not be bullied and beaten up. And we just did that just while we were leaving. That way we didn't have to mess with the brooder and all that stuff. I'm gonna be building a bigger chick shaw, like a great big one, uh, that they'll be able to move into. They'll become our mobile flock. And eventually we will tie them in and you know put them with our other mobile flock. So this is where I stuck our mobile flock while we had our farm sitters coming. I've seen a lot of questions, people asking, hey, where did all of our black chickens go? Well, this is our mobile flock. They are invaluable on this place. If I want a place uh, prepped for garden or I have a whole bunch of weeds that I want destroyed without honestly having to do any work, that's the crew I, uh, I take and I fence them in an area and they just go crazy. <laughs> There's a flower bed way out at the end of the driveway over there. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but the weeds were all this tall because I can't mow it because it's got railroad ties on the border. I just fenced them around it and they ate everything in there all the way down to bare dirt. So yeah, layers in the coop. The small ones are the future layers that will join this crew. And then this crew, those are our Australorps. They're invaluable. That's Chuck. That's our rooster. He's a good guy. All right. Thanks, Chuck. All right, let me get these poor guys fed. Looks like watered too. These chickens, you can tell they're young. They uh, they do random things. Someone laid an egg out in the middle of the grass. Who's who's not understanding how a nest box works? All right, we'll check eggs. See if we have eggs. No eggs yet. Okay, you guys are slacking. Apparently confused on where you're supposed to lay eggs. People might ask, why am I washing the water out, scrubbing it? I'm of the mind, if you wouldn't drink out of it, it's not fair that you give it to your animals. I guess it's all part of that, like being a good steward. My sink right here, I found this sink at our uh, little junk shop we like to go to. We got it for what, 30, 40 bucks, something like that. Had everything on it, all I had to do was screw it into a hose. I love it. It's so much nicer being able to fill up animal water in a sink instead of on the ground. I love this. Plus, I've always loved a, a wash tub like this. I love wash tubs. I've always wanted one. All right, time to get pig feed. We'll go down and see our new pigs. So, 
we've had these uh these new pigs down here in the barn what's today today's wednesday so you know we've had them home for three days and they're starting to chill out a little bit uh we decided on lamb chop you know pork chop lamb chop the name just fit so that's what the girl's name is and then our boar that's bubbles and i think that's a highly appropriate name he just he has a personality that seems like bubbles fits all right let's see all right you guys are making a mess you guys know it's time to eat huh yeah hi come here come here hi I want to sniff you. I want to make sure you're okay. What about you, Lamb Chop? How are you doing, Lamb Chop? Well, it's the first time she's ever made noise. She's uh, usually really quiet. All right. Get you some water since you guys are just like determined to dump your water out. They're like, no, I don't want water. I want food. That's good. Oh yeah, bubbles is cool. Yeah. They feel so rough. Like it looks like wool. That is not wool. It's like really coarse hair. Ugh. I'm shedding a little bit. Oh good. This is good progress. Yesterday I couldn't hardly pet her. And bubbles. Bubbles is cool. He'll he'll let me pet him. Oh, is that the spot? Is that the spot? <laughs> oh, that's the spot. He's gonna lay down. Yeah, he is. Okay, let's leave him alone. So they're doing better. I can actually get in there and pet them. They, uh, they're so skittish, but I think it was, you know, the trauma of moving them and transporting all that. A lot of people have said exactly what I thought. They kind of look like big possums. Kind of ugly. But I think we'll, uh, we're gonna talk about why we got these and why we're interested in Mangalitsa. Really what we're interested in is they are a, oh gosh. I think we'll do a whole video just about them or at least, you know, the better part of a video. We'll go into more detail later. Like we're, we're excited to experiment with these. The reason these ones get names is because they're gonna be around a while. They are, we're gonna breed them. We're just gonna grow out the babies and eat those. Um, so this pair, this pair will be around a while. Uh, plus, Bubbles isn't quite old enough to, you know, do his job. So, we've got a while. We'll have him for a while. So, out here where we've been running the pigs, we've been clearing land. Um, just little by little as, as I find time, you know, an afternoon here, a morning there. This is what we did last Monday. Or, yeah, Monday. Cleared a whole ton, cut a whole ton. We opened up this space in here. We're really starting to open things up and see see how everything's gonna look so we did this space you can see the stumps nice big open area basically there's a lot of uh sick trees we have some sort of weird fungus that grows on our sweet gum trees uh so i'm taking those out um there's some pine trees that i swear only had five pine needles on them because they were too small so you know we're just opening it up we're keeping there's choke cherry in here there's persimmon uh anything that's flowering or fruiting mulberry nut trees that's the stuff we're keeping and everything else we're just going to clear out and eventually we would like to be able to you know get i guess it's called a silva pasture uh where it's like savannah it's got trees and grass and i think that would be ideal for running animals back here so here's the guinea hogs how are you guys doing? You guys are getting fat. It's about time to move you guys. You guys have worn out this paddock. So let me feed them. That way they're quiet and then I'll, I'll keep talking. Okay, okay, come on. Come on. Okay, so I wanted to do an experiment this time Everything I've cleared, I have gone in and I've cleared it to where it's comfortable for me. Like I've cut down all the brambles and everything. Uh, and it's, it's worked out, but this time, this particular paddock, 
I cleared the perimeter and that was it. Just the perimeter and I put them in here to see what they would do. I don't think I have any before or afters. <laughs> well, I have after. So in here, you couldn't even walk in here. It's still pretty thick, but you can see everything from as high as they can reach down is gone. Uh, and then obviously the stuff they don't like, they just leave. But for the most part, they have opened this up amazingly well. Like everything basically looked like that. It's just a thicket, it's super dense, and they have just tilled up and destroyed everything, you know, from what, two feet down. So I'm really happy with this. So now it's even easier for me. There's not so much stuff on the ground. I can come in, I can bring my, my weed eater flail and just clear everything. Oh, I didn't notice this is a mulberry too. It's a big old mulberry. We got a mulberry and then I think that's a black walnut. I'm not positive. This is a choke cherry. But yeah. Ideally, any fruit that we don't get. Oh yeah, it's a mulberry. There's one. There we go. So yeah. So stuff like that. Um, you know, the birds are gonna get them. Uh, squirrels, you know, all that stuff. They're gonna eat the mulberries and stuff like that. So I figure whatever drops on the ground, if we have animals in here, animals will come eat them. So it's free food. Uh, it's, I really like that style of system. Um, eventually, I would like to get more into permaculture and things like that but for right now like we've got too much stuff going on to really set up a good permaculture system but until then we'll just keep moving in that direction ah. Ooh, that's a big old spider where'd he go is he on me spiders man this is one of my favorite places on the property we've got some real big trees in here yeah it's absolute destruction where they've been they've worn out this uh this spot so i'm gonna move them i've got a few more pastures that i'm gonna or pastures paddocks up in here that i'm gonna make and have them clear but it's starting to get into that super hot humid part of summer and what i would like to do is finish up here and then move them down to the swamp down there you can see there's the water and it basically starts up up over that way. And so what we're gonna do is let them have that as a wallow. Um, come summertime, when everything starts drying up, the seasonal creek stops flowing and it just pools right there. We've found the springs that feed it, but there's not enough flow to get the water flowing off the property. So yeah, once it gets super hot, we'll put them in there. They'll enjoy it. They'll have shade and water. Um, and a place to wallow. I still haven't figured yet how I'm going to combine the space to keep both sets of pigs, but so far, that's where we're at. They're looking good. We will do a garden tour type video. A lot of people who have asked what we're growing and all that, that stuff, we will show you. Uh, that'll be a different video. If I do it in this video, it'll be a really long video. So, are you guys ready to do the meat birds? Yeah. Okay. It's fence off. Yeah. All right. So people have asked about the ducks. You want to grab me a duck? Yeah. These are jumbo Pekings. Um, they are basically the meat bird equivalent of a duck. Like they get huge. They're lazy. They just sit around. They're super fat. Um, like so far, they've been great. I mean, they're ducks. Anybody who's ever kept ducks understand how nasty ducks can be. These are not pets or layers. These are all males. They're strictly for meat, so, you know, don't get attached. But the feed to meat ratio looks like it's pretty good. We'll figure it out once it comes butcher time. We've got, you know, all of our feed and everything. We're gonna figure out exactly, you know, what, what it looks like. Looks like you're attached to the ducks. He likes the ducks. So, these ones in here, these are our Cornish Cross. They're just about done. I think we have a couple more weeks. They're looking pretty good. And then in here we have, I think it's McMurray Hatcheries um, Big Red. They are a little bit smaller, but so far I think I like them a little bit better than the, the Cornish Cross. Um, they're a little slower gr growing, but they're, uh, 
a little hardier. Like they deal with the heat better and they're, they act a little more, you know, chickeny. Like they scratch and they're more interested in the grass than they are the feed when we move them. You'll see that right now. We're getting ready to move the, uh, we'll move the tractors and you'll see them. They get super excited for new grass. Yeah, they're loving it. Some of these chicks have very bad manners. They stand in the food. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm gonna design. I'm gonna design a different feeder. I don't like that at all. So that's the meat birds and the ducks. You know, nothing special. It's it's kind of weird doing like meat birds. Like there is no attachment. You can't get attached to them. You know, take care of them. Yes, like. Make sure they have a good life, yes, but as far as attachment, they are what they are. We are raising them for meat. And now my favorite. Favorite next to the pigs is the turkeys. Hi, turkeys. All right, who's my turkey friend? Are you my turkey friend? That one looks like instant turkey. They see shiny. Yeah. You would rather eat out of the top. So there you have it. That's the animals. Everybody's growing fast and doing good. Doesn't get much better than this. I like the turkeys. If like I was gonna have any poultry as a pet, I'd probably pick a turkey. They're cool. They'll come to you. You can call them and they'll come running. It's just crazy. But yeah, that's it. That's our morning routine those are all of our animals i think later we're going to do a garden tour maybe in another video but there you have it